Vanguard Zombies, the Archon Easter Egg Guide. Let's do this. As soon as you spawn in, you're going to want to burn through a few rounds to get enough points to open up all of the map to retrieve the Pack-A-Punch Machine parts. There are two on either side of the map. You have these helpful star markers to let you know where you need to go. One of the parts is in the derailment area on top of this train. You just want to hold to collect it. Once you hit drop down and look through the train carts to find a shovel. You are going to need this in order to complete the Easter Egg. If you're playing in co-op, there are quite a few scattered around the map. This is a guaranteed spawn for that shovel. The second part can be achieved by opening up this debris towards the spike area and on the edge of this plane wing will be the second piece like that and then go back to the pack a punch interact with it to start a ritual where a ton of zombies are going to spawn once you've killed enough zombies your screen will flash white and the pack a punch machine will be there in front of the pack a punch machine will be a podium where you can place the relic mirror after a fairly long conversation where court effects spawns into the world the red portal will have appeared before going up to it and teleporting to the dark ether i do recommend pack a punching your starting weapon it will make this next section a little bit easier but court effects will spawn in a ton of zombies including storm kriegers which is why the papped weapon is going to really help you out here and once you've taken out the zombies court effects and the construct are actually going to down you but don't worry this is part of the easter egg you won't have lost your self revives or your perk progress or anything like that you'll just teleport back into the main map fully revive now that you're back in the main map the main parts of this easter egg begin where there are three different obelisks with three different trials to complete and you can complete these trials in any order but the order I'm going to show you in this video is definitely the easiest. Starting with this one behind the Pack-A-Punch area on Merchant Road, you'll find this red obelisk. And in order to activate this obelisk, we need to dig around this area to find an orb. So this is where the shovel comes in, but you're going to just be looking around in this area, looking on the ground for dig spots, and you will find this orb. Once you've found the orb, it will float towards the wall behind this obelisk, and going up to it will begin the challenge. And this first challenge is a memory challenge, where the wall is going to be showing three different symbols. Huge shout out to Mysterio on the cod zombie subreddit for this image where in game you just look at each symbol that flashes and relate it to a number that's on this chart using this image my first symbol was 10 my next symbol matched with number 12 my last matched with number two once you've noted them down you will be in a one minute countdown challenge where you need to stand on each of the symbols that you saw in the order that they were shown as they are going to be now runes so as you can see i'm running around trying to find my first symbol and then you go, you just stand on it to secure it. And definitely having a zombie at the end of the round makes this a lot easier, especially if you do it in co-op. Then I run to find my second one. And again, I just stand on it. And then I go and find my third symbol. Again, just standing on it. And once I've completed that, you should get a completion screen where your screen will flash yellow and you'll have a challenge to do for a minute. So in this particular instance, I had regenerate health only when prone. So for a whole minute, I had to make sure that I didn't lose too much health. And if I did, I had to prone in order to get it back. There's a good chance that your challenge will be different. And if you're doing this in co-op, only the player that completed the final rune on the ground will actually have to do this challenge. But if for whatever reason you fail this challenge or you don't stand on the correct runes, you'll need to go another round and then go up to the orb to begin the process again. Once it's completed successfully, you'll hear a quote from Von Liss where he says, good, now do it again. And you'll need to go back up to the orb and repeat this step, but this time it's going to be showing four symbols instead of three. These will be different symbols to the three symbols that you had to stand on in the previous step. So again, in solo, just pause or if you're playing in co-op use the image mysterio used on reddit i'll have that link in this video's description and again i really do advise trying to do this at the end of a round just so you only have one zombie that way you don't need to keep stepping on and off the runes all the time but e for shroud would definitely make this a lot easier as well but again you only have a minute to complete the sequence and when you do you'll be given another random challenge with your screen going yellow this time it was use the given pistol only i didn't have to kill any zombies it's just survived for a minute regardless of what the challenge is you have to stay in this area near the obelisk if you leave you will fail the challenge you'll have to go another round once that's completed von list will say good do another and this time you have a five symbol sequence but this is the final one that you need to do decoy grenades are also incredibly useful during this step so if you can get them definitely use them my final challenge was movement causes damage so once you've completed this whatever your final challenge is you'll be able to begin the trial of mindfulness. If you didn't already have decoy grenades and your ether shroud ready, I definitely advise you have two decoy grenades for this as it's just going to make your life a lot easier. When you're ready, interact with it to begin this trial and immediately throw down your decoy grenades. Now, the way that this trial works is you basically need to stand on all of the runes, but you cannot damage any zombies. You can't be shooting any zombies. So the way I do this is again with the decoy, there's going to be Sabala and you want to make sure that when she's teleporting, 
teleporting and is near you that you watch out because if you stand still and she teleports on you, she will down you. So if that's the case, just move off the rune. If you're doing this in solo, you only need to stand on about three or four runes, but in co-op, you're going to need to stand on quite a lot more. That's why you have more players just standing on the runes. And when you complete it, you'll be given a bunch of drops and that will be the first of three trials complete. Now let's move on to the trial of sacrifice. In order to do this, you're going to need to have three Molotovs, which you can purchase off the wall in Merchant Road West. Step requires Molotovs, so you're going to need to have three of them. On your way up towards the trains, there are going to be three different areas where we're going to throw down Molotovs to light up torches. The first is in the train here in the rail path. Our second one is going to be right here in front of these spikes. And you simply just need to throw the Molotov on the ground towards the torch. It doesn't need to be right on it, but you see that second one's lit up. And then this third one is right here. So just throw that down. All three are lit and an orb is going to spawn out of that. And we can now interact with it. Here a quote that the orb demands a weapon enhanced by the Pack-A-Punch. So you can need to get your hands on a Pack-A-Punched weapon. At this point in the game, my loadout weapon is Pack-A-Punched. I'm at round 15. And around this time, you will only get papped guns out of the box. So just hit the box once, get yourself a papped gun and take it back to the orb. But it will prompt you to sacrifice your Pack-A-Punched weapon. Shortly after this, a Storm Kruger is going to spawn, which is absurd strong. I highly recommend you switch your artifact to Frost Blast as well as making sure you've used your hearts to upgrade your field upgrade. Just pop that and it will be a lot easier to take this thing down as you see right here. Taking down the Krieger will spawn a red orb on top of the obelisk on the train and that is how we begin the trial of sacrifice. Now the way that this trial works is there are going to be several obelisks around the map that you need to charge up with souls but it has to be with Ring of Fire. Now don't worry you don't need to change your class or anything. As soon as this starts you want to hop down there is a stone that lets you change your artifact to ring of fire obviously changing artifact means you need to get zombie kills in order to charge it up but if you jump up onto the middle train where we activated the trial killing a few zombies collect souls into that which spawns a full power power up which will recharge your ability all the way to the max which is obviously really really helpful so once you've got that you want to stand near one of these obelisks pop your ring of fire and then get about three to four zombie kills if you're playing on solo co-op you're obviously going to need a lot more but you'll know when it's complete when there is a stream of red light that's coming from the obelisk to the middle obelisk. Once you've done that, pop back onto the train and kill zombies again for that middle one to get another full power and then run over to another obelisk. Pop your ring of fire, get about three to four zombie kills until the obelisk connects to the middle one. And you're just going to rinse and repeat this for all of the four surrounding obelisks that will connect to the middle. As you can see, you have a time limit, so you don't have very long. But honestly, as long as you're making sure that you go back to that middle to get that full power power up pretty quickly, you should have no trouble at all. And if you do fail it, then you just need to go to the next round in order to try it again. Once your screen flashes white and the timer is gone, there will be a bunch of power-ups for you at that obelisk and that trial will be complete and there's only one more to go. The final obelisk is in the area called Debris Field, which is where you can get the Quick Revive perk. In this section of the map, there is going to be a bunch of red dark ether crystals that you're going to need to shoot. They're mainly out of bounds, can be found in front of the obelisk or to the left of the red portal here, as you see there. But there are a bunch of locations that I'm looking and shooting. Eventually, you will find the red orb in one of those crystals that will go all the way onto this wall. Going up to the orb, the decimator will say that the orb wants you to gather three items, but beware each of them are cursed. Pay attention to the item that decimator says, as this one, it first says, search your enemy's home away from home. For this clue, you want to go into the tents and you'll find the cursed officer's hat that you'll want to pick up. And suddenly we have a little challenge to do whilst we're taking this back to the orb. So in this case, I had damage causes point drain. So of course, I tried my best to run as quickly as possible. Having tier four stamina will definitely make this easier as you can't run during this. And also your ether shroud makes you run super duper quick. So if you really need to, definitely use that. But zombies are going to be spawning in front of you quite aggressively. So do take them out. Be sure to use your ether shroud if you need to. But popping that item on the orb will be the first part. You then will need to go and find a second item, which is going to be opposite the diabolical damage. As you can see, we picked up a skull with ether shroud. I am just running real quick and we place that on the orb. And now we just need to get one more part. Now for this, you want to go back to the train section and you're going to be digging around this area. It seems to always be a dig spot right at the back of this area so just keep looking as you see right here i dug it up and we're looking for this cursed femur the challenge i got here was reload disabled once we take that back to the orb we will now have the orb on the obelisk so we can begin this trial but more importantly the decimator shield falls down that we can use and we need this for this trial so make sure you pick it up and when you're ready go up to the obelisk to begin the trial of resilience now around this area is going to be a load of 
of these weird siphon cores. You're going to want to use the shield's blast, which is going to reveal this sort of chalice thing that you can pick up, and you need to bring it to this parched fountain over there to fill. Now, the shield has a 30 second cooldown on that charge mechanic using the left trigger. You're going to need to just wait around a little bit until the shield is ready to go again, but the second siphon core location is going to be right in front of the perk machine here. When it's ready, use your left trigger. It's going to destroy it, and it'll be the prompt to fill the chalice, and then you're going to want to take it over to that fountain and fill it up again. If you're playing in co depending on how many players there are, there is going to be another siphon core within this area, so we should look out for it. But now we're going to move on to the area where we have the jug perk. As you can see, there are two siphon cores here. So if you angle it this way with the blast, it actually destroys two of them. So as you can see, we've filled up our chalice and we're going to run back and fill it up. And for solo, that's all you need to do. You only need to fill it up three times. But in co-op, obviously you need to fill it up quite a few more times. But once the fountain is full, your screen will flash. There'll be a load of drops around the obelisk and that'll be all three trials. You are ready to go. You are boss fight ready, but I definitely recommend that you get some of your perks up graded definitely diabolical damage because that is going to let you do a lot more critical damage in the boss fight a long range weaponry is definitely the preferred weapons to use in this boss fight by all means you can use ray guns if you can get it out the box you're going to want to make sure your weapon is at least two tier pack a punch but i recommend you have it tier three pack a punch if your box luck is like mine absolutely terrible then i definitely recommend going and buying the bar off the wall it's called the widow maker and this is all over the map in the boss fight so it's definitely recommended to get this just because it's so easy to get ammo. It costs 13,000 points and I made sure I had this thing tier 3 pack a punch before I went in. As long as your other perks are tier 3 rarity, go to your loadouts and make sure you switch your artifact to ring of fire as it's going to make it a lot easier. If you're playing co-op, make sure whoever has the decimator shield does not get rid of it. It is very useful in this boss fight. When you're ready, take the portal by pack a punch to the dark ether and the boss fight will begin where we have several phases of taking down court effects. Once he is huge, we begin the first phase and this is the easiest phase as he will take damage at any point you just need to be shooting his forehead you can see there is an orb in his forehead if you're shooting it he will take damage at any point now court effects does several different attacks which will explain very quick and easily in this video the first is there's going to be a big red orb that will follow you around if you have the decimator shield using the left trigger blast will destroy this orb but if you walk into it it's going to down you so you want to get rid of that thing quickly or just avoid it if you don't have the shield for whatever reason second attack is he's going to spawn a ton of light Lightning, which is going to be like jolting all around the area and will slow you down and damage you. So you definitely want to be avoiding that. Whenever you get a little bit of a quiet moment, you definitely want to be just focusing on shooting his forehead as you see me do here. He spawns a red orb. Make sure you take that thing out with your shield or just run around to avoid it and just keep shooting his forehead. And you'll see that he has quite a big health bar. We can only deplete it to a quarter during this first phase. Some moments he will spawn hordes of zombies, but if you've got the decimator shield, just one blast of the left trigger should wipe out all of the zombies. Admittedly, Court Effects is a little bit of a bullet sponge, and this will take you a little bit longer than most traditional boss fights in zombies, but that's all good. Just take your time and make sure you get this first phase done. Once you've done enough damage, his health bar will disappear. He will disappear momentarily, giving you a max ammo and some points, and the area will have slightly opened where you can pack a punch if you need to, get yourself some armor, some equipment if you need to as well. And we move on to the second phase. For the second phase, he has a shield which we need to break. So around this area there's going to be a ton of crystals which if you shoot are going to give you these small little weird crystal drops what you want to do you want to be shooting them picking up the little crystal shard that it drops and using your left bumper to throw these grenades into these weird plants that have spawned around Court effects will be doing the same attacks that he's done before and there are chances that he will destroy these plants but the way that this mechanic works is you're throwing these crystals into the plants you're going to wait about 20 or so seconds and the plants are going to give you a corrupted crystal shard with that crystal shard you're going to be looking up into the sky and throwing it at one of these floating pillars and as you see the pillar will float towards court effects destroying his shield and now giving us access to damage him which will be one of his eyes at this point i didn't yet put on ring of fire but you can see just how you useful it would have been if I had Ring of Fire doing well over a thousand damage per shot. But I go ahead and switch to it, but the mechanics are exactly the same once his shield comes back. He's going to be doing the same attacks as the first phase. You're going to be wanting to shoot these crystals and then throwing them into the plants and letting them grow. Now in solo, you only need to throw 
one corrupted shard at these pillars, but in co-op, you're going to need to throw a lot more. You're going to need to destroy maybe three to four. Just keep paying attention to see when that shield has broken and he's ready to take damage and just pile into him. Repeating that until you've done enough damage into him so we can move on to the third and final phase once you've gotten that max ammo. We'll be teleported to an even smaller area, but it remains the same scenario. You're going to want to be shooting crystals, throwing them into the plants, avoiding his attacks. This time, he's going to be spawning zombies as well as storm kriegers. So you definitely want to be making the most out of taking those out. The shield blast will take them out in one. And again, getting those corrupted crystals, throwing them up to the pillars so he's weak and then shooting his other eye. As you see with Ring of Fire, super easy. Cortifex is taken down. He is gone. And that is the end of the Easter egg. No cutscene to speak of. It just abruptly ends. I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. If you did, a like would be super appreciated. I have tons more zombie guides from the last decade of zombies. So if you need any help with other maps, they're on the channel.